All right, so we're okay. We don't need to look at any of that. A couple of you sent me answers, and I think most of you were right. So if you haven't done that, get that in. All right, we've, uh, let's see, let's summarize a little bit. We've got two sets of normal stresses that we've come across so far. One is just the, the that normal stress we started class with, which is just simply uh, uh, if there's some kind of axial force of some kind, then that'll cause an internal force in the material acting over a cross-sectional area, which will just be a, a particular uh, particular just just a, an axial load of some kind that causes it. So I guess we can call that axial stresses. Then we had uh, the stresses due to bending, which we knew to be linear through uh, across the cross section, with uh, a point of zero stress being at the neutral axis, which we also now know goes through the area centroid. So we had uh, those bending stresses. Then we've also looked at some uh, some shear stresses those came in in two flavors for us one was uh, the uh, shear stress due to the torsion remember the, the twisting of, uh, of the, these pieces or these shafts or whatever transmission shafts was the most likely place that we've seen this sort of thing where uh, that was also a linear function of position across the piece. And then we just finished with, uh, we just finished uh, with the transverse shear stresses. We just finished last week with that. So that's that's kind of a quick summary of the things we've uh, we've had so far. Um, now, if you if you noticed in any of these type of problems we've been doing, we only had one of those stresses or the other. We only had uh, axial loading at one time, but we didn't have axial loading and bending going on at the same time. Uh, a very good example of when that type of thing could happen, and we'll look at it very closely later in the term, is if we have a column, a long slender column that's loaded, that's going to have uh, clearly an axial load of some kind. So we'll see those type of axial stresses we saw in the first very first week of the course. But if it's long and slender enough, it will also tend to bend like that. And so there's going to be both axial loading and bending stresses in the, in the piece at once. So we're going to look at problems like that, combined loadings. They're, they're relatively straightforward to deal with in that they, uh, for small deformations at least, they tend to just add together. So imagine we have, again, some simply supported beam of some kind loaded in a very simply way, simple way, um, some kind of axial loading like this. Now, uh, did you need to wake DJ up, if I, or me? Um, it could be that uh, there's something about the structure that means it's loaded that way, or it could be that uh, sometimes pieces are put into a structure and they're loaded uh, as they're put in before the structure is even completed, sort of pre-stressed. And then let's imagine we also have some kind of transverse load. We'll put it there and uh, 
in millimeters. We'll position it uh, right there. So this is a, a very simple type of loading. We've seen these type of loadings before, but we've never seen them together. The solution of, of this is, is uh, relatively easy in that we can break these two apart. Look at just that loading and the stresses it causes. We know that if we uh, look at the type of stress that's caused in that, there'll be a uniform normal stress all the way across the piece. Just the very type of stuff we looked at in the first week. Then we can also add to it what we know about the bending stress. Which we looked at in, oh, I don't know, probably the second month of things, I guess we were looking at things. And we know that we have to figure out what these what these uh, these loads are there, and that at some point we could figure out what the maximum moment is, and we'll just take this cross section to be a simple rectangle make things a little bit uh, simpler for now. Call it 50 by 75 millimeters. We know that that uh, bending stress is linear being zero through the neutral axis we have compression on the top for the type of, of uh, bending or type of loading that we've shown there. And we know that the maximum bending stress would come wherever the maximum moment is. at the farthest away from the neutral axis piece of that uh, beam over the um, moment of inertia of the cross section. Nice, simple rectangular cross section. Not too big a deal to look at, I hope. And uh, then we, without too big a stretch, can imagine then that The true loading now is the combination of the two of those. So our neutral axis is there. So we've got this, this, oops, hang on here. Sorry about that, drew these arrows going the wrong way. Because for the bending we've got, we've got uh, an axial loading that puts everything in tension and then a bending that puts the top in compression and the bottom in tension. So we we'll want the arrows going the same way as the tension for that. So sorry about that. So this, uh, this a little bit of the compression will take up some of the tension on the top all the way through and then we get a cross section that might look or I mean a, a loading that might look something like this depending upon how much of the compression along the top 
is worth the uh, tension that's caused by the axial loading. Well, we can figure out all of those. So it's not too too big a deal, I hope. We've been going over a lot of this stuff for, for some time. For example, that normal axial stress we know to be, uh, what, the 25 kilonewtons acting over that simple rectangular cross-section, and so we can figure out what that stress is. It's uh, simply 6.67 megapascals. Right, that's that's long been in our playbook, that one there. We're, we're happy to see that, that's like a dear old friend. So, the uh, this one takes a, a just a little bit more time. We need to figure out what the what the maximum moment is. But your experience, I think, should show you that uh, the maximum moment is going to occur right here. We've seen that type of thing before. You could uh, you could probably quickly come up with that. I bet. Um, so we can just put it in here. That's going to be the. 2.7 kilonewtons at the 375 millimeter point. That's where we're going to see the maximum moment. The moment will decrease to zero from there. C is the greatest distance from the neutral axis, which is half of the 75. 75 millimeters over 2. And what's I for a rectangular cross section? Yeah, 112. The base, which is 50, times the height, which is 75. Q. So you can figure out that then. Um, and remember, it's symmetric, so that'll give us the compression on the top and the tension on the bottom, and we can be a little more, more specific with these cross sections now. So somebody work that out for me so we've got it. And then we'll put these together in uh, a little bit of a scale drawing just to make sure stuff fits to see what we end up with. So I'm just re-sketching the separate loads here. We know that to be 6.67 megapascals. to which we're adding now the bending stress, which we calculated separately now. And they got it? So we're getting something like 21.7 megapascals, right? Uh, we know that to be linear zero at the neutral axis, so that's 21.7 compression at the top, uh, so about three times bigger than what I've got there. And tension along the bottom, so I have tension going to the right, the compression going to the left, and it's the two of those together that allow us now to draw our, our full profile. So uh, the top 
will be in compression, because we have more compression from the bending than we have tension from the axial load. And that's, uh, that's what? Oh, I don't happen to have that one. What's 21.7 minus 6.7? Never mind, 15, right? So we've got 15 in compression. And the bottom will be the 21.7 of the tension from the bending and the 6.7, the tension from the top, which is what, 28.4. And so you see that the profile is all shifted. What was this? This was 15, I think. 15 megapascals in compression on the top. And uh, what was it, 28.4, 28.3 tension on the bottom. The max. It's a simple superposition arithmetic loading, uh, uh, arithmetic addition of the two loads, two types of loads we had. Does that have a new neutral axis? Yeah. The old neutral axis was right down the center. Now there's, it's not a, a geometric neutral axis, but there is a new place where the stresses are zero. It's been shifted because of the combination of the two loads. You could look at it as, as this tension relieved a little bit of this compression, but did add a little bit to the tension below. So, depending on what the materials are, it may or may not make things substantially worse. If this was a concrete, uh, a concrete beam, then we served to increase the tension along the bottom where concrete stores as it is anyway. Uh, so this might be one of those cases where you want to consider a rebar across the bottom to hold some of that tension. All right, so let's do one together. Um, Got some kind of a, a bracket thing here attached to the wall. Like that. And we're concerned about two points. One point right in the middle there one point right down here at the bottom. Maybe we're going to uh, consider drilling some holes there or for some reason we want to double check what the uh, what the uh, stresses are there. which is two inches from the center of the far side of the bracket. One and a quarter inch down from the upper part, we have a load that is pounds at a three, four, five slope. Does everybody know what that means? When we say there's a three, four, five slope, what that is, that gives us the, you automatically have the, the trig components that uh, uh, if this hypotenuse is some multiple of five, which it nicely is, then the other components are some multiple of three and some multiple of four uh, by the same scale. All right, so what are the, what's the rest we need here? 
Oh, the cross section right here. is rectangular. That was too square. Half inch by three quarters inch. Where that there is the half inch. Same half. stresses we can find in again the same way by adding them together. Alright, everybody okay with the picture? That again is our cross section. the neutral axis will be symmetrically across the bottom. Okay, so that's the deal. Uh, to expose those two points, we can do a free body diagram. Point A there, point B there. That's where we want to know the stresses. The load is this 250 at 345. So we've got some of axial load on this and some bending load and some shear all caused by this load over here. So we know components are 200 by 350 uh, by 150. So internally back here, we must have a, an axial load. Uh, by inspection, it should be pretty easy to tell what that is. That's got to be equal to the 200, the horizontal component there. Uh, we have a uh, load down, so we must have a uh, shear up. Uh, again, fairly obviously, it should be equal to the 150. And then there's also, though, a moment caused by, well, we got the 200 at a one and a quarter moment arm and the 150 at a two inch moment arm. So take a second to figure out what that moment is just to warm you up here. Make sure we all get the same thing. Because each of those is going to contribute something to these stresses. So we need to figure out all of those, those pieces and then just add them together. And check your numbers with each other.
degree? Got something for the moment? Did I draw it in the right direction? Yeah? No? And it's how much? Powder? 500, 550? Okay, there's 50 inch pounds. Because th these two moments are opposite each other. The shear will obviously be the 150, and the axial load will be the 200. Okay, so we can figure out what the stress is. The normal stress is at point A. It will be some tension caused by the axial load there, that uh, P, plus a little bit of tension. We know by observation it'll be tension because of that moment at uh, whatever location uh, with respect to the neutral axis that point A happens to be. Which is, who wants to do this one in their head and take the rest of the day off? It's tempting, huh? It's almost like get out of class, except you can't leave. You have to stay here. It's what? Well, that's what I is. What is this? Why zero? Point A is on the neutral axis, so Y is zero. Remember, that's the distance of the point of concern. In this case, we have points pre-selected for us. So, that one's zero. <coughs> and so the P over A is uh, real straightforward. What is that? Uh, 0 0.533 KSI. And uh, that is tension. We, we can see that from inspection. All right, we do the same thing at point B. It's got the same normal tensile, normal stress there. But because of the moment being applied, we know that's a compression, so we'll give that a minus sign. That's typically what we do for compression. Now we know what the moment is. Uh, y is pretty easy to pick up from there. Um, so we do have to calculate I, but it's a rectangular cross section. 112 the base times the, the height. Now do that separately because we are going to need that, remember, for the shear stress, the VQ over IT. So figure out I separately for the cross section. Figure out what I is. Keep it separate because we're going to need it again later anyway. And then uh, figure out what the normal stresses are at point B. Did you get a note about the technical grants catching survey? You checking the email ever? Oh, that's what we'll do class today then.
Yeah, just a satisfaction survey, so I can throw that into the paper. Oh, okay. It's a paper to do uh, tomorrow. I got it all written. I just need to put some of that stuff in. numbers and you've checked them with each other <clears throat> make sure we all have the same eye I uh, hope we do it's just right there <coughs> make sure we get the same stresses I is zero zero seven eight one five something for the stress? <coughs> Doobie, you do. You're not doing anything. You can check with anybody. Check with DJ. He's not doing anything either. He's looking for somebody to talk to. DJ's over here. This is DJ over here. Wow, DJ. It's burning. Check with anybody? How many talk to you? Who did you check with? You agree? Yeah. How can you check with him? He didn't have any units. Uh, yeah, I mean, I tripped you, didn't he? That'd be nice. There is a, a there are a couple of calculational packages, MathCAD, where you actually can put the units in and it'll check them for you. It's really nice. We don't have it, of course. My cell phone could be hurt. Yeah, well. Good. <laughs> go talk to go talk to Malcolm about amazing telephones. Alright, what'd we get there? Wrong. No, don't guess. Tension or compression? Compression. Because in this case, these two are not acting together, right? They, the one part here is in, in uh, tension, this part's in compression. We need to know which is dominant. It's what? Uh, compression. Compression? Now, that would have come through, you should have had a minus 1.07. All right, then the, uh, the shear stress is um, also made up of two parts. We have the, we have the uh, oh sorry, just one part, because we don't have any torsion in here. V, Q over I, T, where this is Q, a, and then we also need to do that for B. So we've already got V, we've already got I nicely, T is just from the cross section, that would be the 0.75. So we just need uh, QA and QB. Remember what those are? My bar right. But 
y bar a of what? Let's draw the cross section real big here. There's the neutral axis. We've got uh, a at the center and b at the bottom of that cross section. So QA is Y bar A of what area? What? Y bar zero, so Remember, it's the from the point of concern away from the neutral axis to the rest of the beam. So and we call that that script A. So that is the area for which we do Y bar A. So QA is Y bar A. AA, I guess you could call it. What's Y bar? that little piece right there. One quarter of the way across the beam and times then the area, which is the half area of the beam. You should get something like 0.023444. Is there a question about that one, Bob? You look like you're just about to ask something. No, where's the Y bar? Is that something? That's the the location of the centroid oh, of the shaded piece okay. with respect to the neutral axis. Is what point point one two five? And then the area is point two five by point seven five. You getting that? Yeah. Okay. QB Y bar B A B. What's that? Zero. Is that zero question mark? Zero period or zero exclamation mark? Exclamation mark. Is he right? I don't want to commit it to ink if he's not right. He could be right because you don't need any units when you say zero. right? Either, if he's right, either y bar, y bar b is zero, or a b is zero. What is, here's, here's big script a a, because uh, Point A was right on the neutral axis, so it was a full half beam we had to look at. B, where's the shaded area? The big script A for B. Remember, it's from that point beyond, away from the neutral axis. And there isn't anything beyond. So there is no stress no shear stress at point B, but there is at point A, and now we can figure it out because we've got all the pieces. We've got the shear, we've got Q, 
two now. I we already had, and uh, T is the width of the beam at that level. So that's the last little piece that we need. Got a bat? Yep. So, so Eject. So what? T was just the points of the T's the thickness of the beam into the board at that point. And since it's rectangular, it makes it easy. Agreed? Pat, you agreed with Oh, sorry, Frank? I did the math, yeah. I thought you were just asking Pat. Oh, did you do this calculation for me? Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> Check those numbers. Do we agree with somebody? Who? Colin. Did you know his name? Colin. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we all agree. What do we get? Point six KSI. Okay. And if we draw a small element right at each of those places, we can draw the load on those elements. So here's a little element at, at uh, point A. We know that to be in general tension. And we know it to have some shear. It's going up on the left side. So it goes down on the right. And remember then the shear all the way around is the same and is the, the uh, shear we calculated there. And then a small element at point B is going to be in compression with no shear. So we can draw a generally loaded element at each of those spots. We're going to be doing that a lot in the next uh, week or two because we're also then going to see what these stresses are if we're at some different angle besides just horizontal. Uh, that's certainly a big deal when you're talking about things like uh, uh, carbon fiber that can be laid at a particular angle and you can really affect the stresses. I uh, you just restate how it was obvious to us that for um, the stress of the that um, P over A was minus. Uh, well, y. if I have to answer that, then it's not obvious. Pretty good obvious. How, how, how we knew this was compression? Yeah, just how that. Well, how that the, the P over A, this, the P is the same all the way across the cross section. The whole cross section is in axial tension. But then, because of this loading, there's also a bending. So at, uh, at that cross section, we have the tension P over A, but then we also have uh, a bending such that the top is in tension, the bottom is compression. So we add to it, maybe I'll change colors, we add to it. Now we don't have the individual numbers. Then it goes zero. So at the top, the two tensions are adding to each other. And we know separately what they are. Well, we're, we're at the middle point. Our point A 
is there. That's why this was zero. Um, and at the bottom where point B is, we have the tension from the axial load, the compression from the bending, which is why we have the minus sign here, because this was tension, this was compression, and we were left over with some compression. And the, and the minus sign would have told you that. Or you could calculate them separately to say this is so big in tension, this is so big in compression, whatever's left over is whichever one of those dominates. Uh, because at A, since the moment was zero, that's why there's a plus. No. At A, the moment is not zero. We're on the neutral axis, so Y is zero. Remember this Y is the distance from the neutral axis. Right. So I tried to make it clear that Y was zero, but M is not. All right, any questions before I get you started on one? All right, imagine a sign on a post. subject to some wind load. So the, the sign signs like that. Parallel to the ground, the sides are either parallel to the ground or parallel to the post. Let's see, this distance here is six meters. The sign is itself 1.2 by two meters. sign is half a meter off the post itself. Not too bad. We'll take that as the x direction. That is the y direction and up as the z direction, x, y, z, yeah, right-hand system. Kind of a Monday morning drawing there. Anonymous. Now I know who did the one response. <laughs> I had no idea who did the one response because it just says anonymous. Nice going, Colin. That's like I remember once at GE we were having a department meeting and our manager said I want everybody to put all their questions on a card no names, so all the questions are anonymous. And they read my question, and somebody over there said, Manning, what'd you ask that for? <laughs> Busted. Right there. All right. And uh, there's this expected pressure on the front of the sign from wind load. 
of 2 kilopascals, 2.0 kilopascal wind load. We want to figure out what the uh, compound stresses are at two points. One point right there at the base. We uh, hopefully we know from our experience that a lot of these things are going to be worse at the bases. So we want one on the front of the sign and one at the side of the sign. I'll draw that. We'll sketch that in because you also need the dimensions of the dimensions of the, the thing itself. It's supposed to be circular and that looks too elliptical from my perspective here. That's worse. There's, there's the, ouch, it's terrible. See, all those little techniques that uh, Hampshire gave us are fine, except we gotta work a little quicker than that. So, there's, there's a cut through the base, so we wanna see what the stresses are right here, and Right there. We'll label those A and B. Okay, let's see. Uh, we can replace this pressure with an equivalent. force, we we'll call it W for the wind force, and that's going to be the pressure times the area. Do you know where that will act? At the center. We'll take this as a uniform, uniformly distributed load. We know we can replace that with a single force acting at the centroid, so that'll be dead center of that sign. Because of that, we're going to see a couple things going on. Uh, the sign will tend to push the post around, which will cause a torsion that we draw with our right-hand rule in that direction. Right? That's, that's tending to twist this post around its base. There's also going to be a moment because this force is up in the air trying to bend the whole thing over. So with our right hand rule that would be in the minus x direction. So that's supposed to look like it's laying right along the, the face there. And then this wind force is also causing a shear right across the face. Each of those contributing to stress, the stress loads at each of the places. For example, at point A, what kind of normal force does a torsion cost? What kind of, I'm uh, sorry, normal stress. What kind of normal stress does a torsion cost? The 
It doesn't. Moment, however, a bending moment will cause a uh, normal stress. So that'll be my over I. And from the action of what's going on, we understand that that will be uh, tension. And shear also causes no normal stresses. So that's all we're going to need for the normal stress at A. How about the shear stress at A? Torsion is going to cause some. That's we know to be T rho over J. Remember what J is? Polar moment of inertia. And uh, that's going to be in that direction and I or, or the V across it is going to be in the opposite direction. Well actually even less than that. V we can figure out is going to be equal to the wind load. I, the moment of inertia of the cross section. T, the thickness of the cross section at that point. And Q is, Q is for this point. Zero. Oops, we've got just enough time to set up the, the last two. B. B is right on the neutral axis with respect to the bending, so there'll be no bending moment. Torsion and shear cause no normal stresses, so at B there'll be no normal stress. And then tau at B are the same types of things. However, in this case, neither are zero. All right. To help you out, double check, I'll just give you these numbers that we'll need. The wind load, which is the pressure times the area, is 4.8 kilonewtons. The moment that causes is 31.7 kilonewton meters. The Torsion is 7.2 kilonewton meters, and then the shear is the same as the 4.8. All right, so see what you get for those, unless you have to go to work to resign. <laughs>